So I've been through the meat grinder in my business the past few weeks and I want to share what happened. I'm getting ready for a meeting right now, so let's just do my makeup while we talk. Essentially what happened is I had a really good past quarter in my agency X8 Media. X8 Media has worked with brands like HP last quarter. We did some stuff traveling to Ethereum crypto conferences in Paris and London. We even hit our biggest personal record of generating the most amount of revenue in the past quarter. I mean, these are things I feel really good about, but at the same time, all these bad things were also happening. I feel like I have completely been lost with my YouTube strategy and I'm losing a lot of views on this channel. We are working on a crypto project, minting tokens, and that kind of absolutely failed, which I'll get into. And on top of that, our largest client at X8 is leaving. <laughs> Essentially, I don't wanna be making this video. It's super uncomfortable to talk about my failures in the past quarter, but I knew that I can't talk about the successes if I don't talk about the bad shit. So I'm gonna share a few stories of times where bad things actually ended up being better and some of them are not fully solved. So like, <laughs> don't expect any happy ending. So the first story I have is last quarter, which is, if you guys don't know, quarters are like every three months. So basically I'm referencing to the start of July to September end of this month. We've made the most amount of money in X8. And for those who don't know, we make money through not only managing brand deals for myself, but also other creators. So we work with a lot of animators in TikTok. So we finished a project with HP, Saweedi, and King Science. That was the biggest project. And I'm really happy for that team. It really went really well. But at the same time, we're also losing another client. For those who don't know, clients can be brands or influencers. And I got a message from a brand and a creator saying they don't want to continue working together and we've been working together for like the past year so it's really hard because it's not just like you know someone that i make money from and take a percentage of the deal it's like someone that i work with for the past years year you know not only there's a lot of like connection but like i'm also scared you know obviously for our financial success at x8 can we keep repeating these milestones without this person and obviously the answer is motherfucking yes it's just you know as a human you are afraid of the unknown right obviously i don't make just one revenue source from this creator and this brand but it's a motherfucking good portion but it's not like everything and i knew that when i had to let this person go it was the right thing because mm, let's just say this i learned that by letting things go that maybe even are financially good for you but emotionally not the best you're actually going to make more money and everyone's gonna be happier. And this was a mutual agreement. I just wanna say that this was like a mutual part ways for both the brand and the creator. But it's just like, it's like a breakup, you know? It's Even if it's mutual, it's still really hard. So I guess the point of the story can be summarized from this podcast by Jocko. Jocko is a motivational speaker. I used to like eat his shit up in high school. Like comment below if you listen to Jocko and your leadership teacher put that shit on. But basically Jocko always said good, even when things are bad. Let me explain. Say you don't get accepted to your dream college. Good, because it allows you maybe to focus more on your independent career, getting a job in the real world. Say you made a YouTube video and it doesn't get views. Well, you have the opportunity to get better in your editing and filming and that is good in itself. Like essentially he is saying like you need to be able, even if it doesn't make sense, you need to find the good in everything. Because if you don't rationalize it for yourself, you're just gonna live in misery. He was saying like the, the, the most successful people can get up from the bad times because they can see it as good. Now, trust me y'all, <sighs> way easier said than done and you know obviously this is to be continued this is like literally as we're speaking this determination is happening so i don't know you know how it's going to benefit me but for now i'm thinking positively i have a bunch of projects in crypto and creator economy that i could also focus on like maybe this is an opportunity to go after my other goals so the next time you feel like you got a rejection or a missed opportunity find the good ask yourself if I weren't able to get this opportunity, what would I do with my time? And you realize you have this freed up time where you can do whatever the fuck you want. So think about that. This next story is about my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna try to be fully transparent because I know a lot of you guys are creators too. So I think for YouTubers, it's really easy to define success in views. Like how else do you define and measure the success of a video, right? And because I grew up in that industry, right? Like where everything's measured in views, I just didn't feel happy with my videos because as you can see, <laughs> I'm gonna be fully honest, like the views just have been going down. I don't know, I just like feel like I'm like failing a lot of people it doesn't even make sense. Like, it literally doesn't make sense because like everyone on my team is getting paid. I'm making really good revenue from brand deals and partnerships that are also translating to my agency. It doesn't make sense why I'm like really caught up in these views. I literally hammer in your head, don't care about views because you're making content for fun. You know what I mean? Like I have a great community that I feel like I've built because I don't care about views. But look at, look where we are. Where is Jaden right now? 
caring about views. I have basically this fear of like, my channel's gonna die and it's gonna fail. And the more videos I post, the more I fail. And that simply isn't the shit, okay? Like, I need to give myself this pep talk, but like, I know historically, I will go through a phase. Everyone will go through a phase of just bleak, not success. But this will build resilience and persistence to get success eventually. My first a million viewed video on YouTube took seven years to get. Seven motherfucking years, right? Of posting content. Maybe it wasn't consistent, but like it took that amount of time for me to achieve that. And look at me, boohooing. Um, the past like 10 months, I didn't get like a million viewed video. Bitch, what the fuck? You've been through more shit. I just think we forget and get lost because we live in a world where everyone's getting a million views a minute on TikTok, where we realize like that's just not normal. And like I've spent years researching content and artists spend years of making music before they get their first, you know, big break. And we just compare ourselves to like the sliver success of like the top creators. And that's why we're getting upset. So I'm trying to drown out the noise. Like my other friends are huge YouTubers. I kind of have to stop giving a fuck about them because if I keep comparing my views to them, I'm not gonna get anywhere and that's just not how YouTube works. You just have to keep putting it out. So I had a meeting with my producer Amanda last week and even Amanda's just like, Jade, you need to be patient. And I'm like, you're right. Good things take time. And it's just going to be that way. And if you can't handle it, then don't be a YouTuber. So I'm just gonna try my best the next few months to put more focus on the process than the outcome and then report back to you guys. I hope this was like helpful though because I know a, a lot, a lot, a lot of people feel the same way. And that's why I'm making this video. It's totally fine to get caught up in the views. You just have to like recenter yourself once you realize, damn, I'm being a superficial bitch. The last story I have is about my imposter syndrome and this story is actually the most saddest one out of all of them and I'm still griefing to be very honest. Okay, so basically what happened was I got invited to speak at VidCon for 2021. Yeah, for those who don't know, VidCon is a creator conference. It's the largest in the world. There's tens of thousands of people. Everybody goes to VidCon. It's the biggest event. And your girl got invited to speak last year around the creator economy and crypto. But I was stressing out because if for those who don't know, like crypto is kind of new and I know a lot about it. I know I know a lot about it, but I definitely don't know everything. And it was freaking me out that I had to go into main stage and talk about how creators can use crypto to make money. I was starting to hyperventilate and like really have an existential crisis in that moment. I was like, ah! I basically was having a very dramatic episode of imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is basically when nothing you do, you feel like you know enough and you can't teach anybody about it. And I was literally like so close to withdrawing. Like I was like, I can't speak. I'm gonna take away my invitation. And last month, we got an email basically saying that VidCon is rescheduled to next year. I was honestly so sad. I was like, fuck, I wanna speak at VidCon and it's getting moved to a year later. <laughs> but the good news is I have a year. I have a motherfucking year to get rid of my imposter syndrome and get through it, bitch. So now I'm like committed. I'm on this like committed journey to build the best presentation for VidCon next year. And I have a few NFT projects I'm overseeing to research, to learn to make sure I'm like really talking my shit. And I think this is like a good thing. Like sometimes imposter syndrome, you know, as long as you don't let it freeze you up and you have enough time, like you can actually be honest with yourself and like what are the gaps that I really don't know? And what are the things I'm just like, over calculating. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes oh, imposter syndrome is correct. Like you're like, yeah, bitch, I actually don't know how a smart contract works. I probably shouldn't be speaking about this in a stage of millions of people. I might need to research more. And that's a good thing. And when you're able to be honest with yourself, the imposter syndrome is just feedback of how to be better. I think for a lot of people going on YouTube, we are very easy to be like, I'm a fraud. I don't know anything about putting on makeup. Why should I make a makeup tutorial? Well, to be very honest, that might be the case. You might not know how to put on makeup, but you can make a video of you learning how to put on makeup. And and that's, that's the content itself. Like I'm adding a section in my presentation at VidCon of things I failed at and I've learned from and you shouldn't repeat when launching an NFT. And I think I'm really excited that I, I had that, you know, a little bit more time to figure that out. But regardless, like you got this bitch, like write down what you need to learn and then go learn it. And then you will use imposter syndrome in a positive way. And you just have to not label yourself as a fraud. That's when you don't even want to move. You have to be confident enough to like, okay, I don't know shit, but I'm gonna learn. That is productive. And I think that's what I'm learning from this whole situation of like, okay, if I feel like I'm having self doubt, let me write down what it actually is. I'm like a little insecure about and see if it's actually true. Cause sometimes the complete reverse, I actually know everything I'm talking about. I was about to speak at a podcast talking about like YouTube growth and TikTok growth and SEO. And I was like getting imposter syndrome and kind of nervous, but like wait a damn minute. I've literally built multiple channels, my own TikTok under a year to 400,000K. And it wasn't content around like how to grow. Like it was actual content. You know what I mean? Like I know my shit. Get the fuck out of here. So I think 
you know, it's really difficult in the moment to be rational, but write it down, get a journal, get some tea, and remember that you're always good enough. You're more than enough, and you got this, B. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Honestly, my life is still chaotic, and we're still unraveling my journey, so give this video a like and subscribe, and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. What is next for Jade? Well, to be very honest, I don't really know. I'm gonna be living in a TikTok house for a little bit with a bunch of founders in Beverly Hills. I also met a boy. So I've been spending time with him. And I've been also working on my newest project, NF Tree, which is essentially creators and crypto fighting for climate change. But y'all can follow me on my Instagram if you want to know about that. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.